welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to draw and paint a prickly pear flower. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> it's a prickly pear cactus and this is the flower that's on it. And this was for my niece, Amelia. She has a cactus room and so I've been trying to paint um, a cactus with a flower for her room. And I'm gonna show you how to draw it in pencil. We'll paint it in using watercolors and you need just basic supplies. The only difference is this time we're going to be using gouache um, to paint in the needles and the middle part of the flower because it's a lot lighter than the rest of the flower and instead of masking it we're just going to paint over the top. So these are the supplies that you need. Watercolor paper, you need a pencil and eraser to draw it with, watercolors and I'm just using a praying set. You literally at the Walmart by my house you can buy this and you need water to paint with. You need some paint brushes, and I'm going to be using, I've liked using these ones lately a lot. Um, I'm using a number 16 um, brush and, round, and then a number 10 round. And um, I'm gonna paint the whole thing with these two brushes. You need a paper towel to blot your brush off on, a piece of scratch paper to test your colors on, and then this is what the gouache looks like that I'm going to be using. Let me just adjust my focus, there you go. Uh, we're, I'm gonna be using primary yellow and then just permanent white. If you don't have gouache, you can use acrylic paint. You can also um, use frisket, um, but you have to use this before we start painting um, to mask out any of the light areas that we want. So I don't, I'm not gonna be using it this time. I'm just, I'm gonna paint these on at the very end. So these are great for whiskers, highlights, things like that. All right, let's get started. I think that's, oh, one more supply. I always forget this. I am going to be using this painter's artist tape, um, just to tape, a border and some artists just use this to keep their paper flat so that when they start painting it it doesn't buckle on them so let's get started first we're going to I'm gonna tape my paper down first actually just so it doesn't move all over the place when I start to film so you can do this if you want it's totally optional and so you want to just tape it so it is on your paper but also touching the paint table behind your paper and pretty straight and then just kind of press the edges to make sure that it's sealed and grab your pencil and your eraser and let's draw this um, you can find the image to this is the image that I'm going to be using I took it in Zion National Park and you can find this on my website I'll include a link below along with other pictures of cactuses um, you do not have to draw this exact same one with me um, because we're mainly focusing on the flower and the cactus is kind of in the background. But I do think that it's still helpful. Um, I like flowers and this is the image that I wanted. I do have some just cactus pictures if that's what you want. So you can pull this up on your computer screen, you can print it out, um, whatever you want. I'm, maybe I'll try to put it on the video, just a small image of it, but it's kind of hard to see the detail in here. Honestly, it's kind of hard to see it in the picture too. So grab your pencil, your eraser, and let's draw this. So this picture, the flower is, this is a lot longer um, than the image that I have. So the image I have is probably, like if I put another piece of tape on, it would just come up a little bit more. But we're just gonna kinda draw basic shapes for the things in this picture. So we have our flower. That's pretty big. Taking up most of the paper. And then we have part of a cactus here, and the bottom part of the cactus is here, kind of coming out of the side of the flower. And then we have one cactus coming back in this direction. And this cactus, this might be part of the one that the flower is actually growing on. And you can kind of see like the top of it. So this is like the top of the shape and this is the side. And then right next to it, we have another cactus right here. So just these simple shapes to start out with. And now let's go ahead and draw in some details for the flower. I'm just moving my camera over so you can see it a little bit better. Focus. All right, so I'm gonna draw the middle of the flower. Um, I'm just gonna draw like an egg yolk down here, this oval. Way more, like that. And this is, this is going to be erased, but it's gonna be helpful for us to have a place to draw some of these petals from. Um, so let's just kinda keep it right there. And let's go ahead and start drawing these petals. When we draw them, I want you to think about like a dress. 
almost like this is upside down and it's just like we're drawing the bottom of a dress or a piece of fabric or drapes that's kind of curved and coming in. You'll see what I mean, I think, when we draw this first one. So it comes kind of right out of the center of this one, in and over and up, curves in, comes up into like this almost triangular shape, rectangular, sorry, or like square, and then drops down and you have like these nice little twirls for a skirt and then it just drops back in. It's actually gonna curve in like that. And then right here you can draw a line just indicating that this curve is, there is a definite fold in this petal right there. And then the second one we're going to draw just comes right outside of it. So we're actually gonna come onto just a little bit and draw like a little M and then a loop over and yours is probably gonna look different. This is a lot of petals. So don't feel like, oh my heck, <laughs> you have to have this exactly like mine looks. Um, if you look at the picture of the flower, it's kind of hard to see what is going on anyway in these petals right here. So it actually kind of curves back and just drops down right here. So just draw that much and then we'll put these other petals that actually come in front of it. So let's start down just a little bit down on this middle section right here and we'll draw a part of this next petal. So it's kind of coming up in an angle and then the top is kind of curving out, makes this little loop and then comes back and drops behind. So this is the inside of the petal, and then we can see the back, but it's just kind of ending right there. And now let's go ahead and draw, let's see, um, inside of this, we actually have a petal. Let's draw the side of it first. So we're gonna drop down a little bit below this middle egg yolk part, and we're gonna leave a little space in between these two petals. And sometimes I say feather instead of petal, so just bear with me, it's like a, like can't stop once I, noticed I did it. Shoot this one straight back up into this petal and then it's gonna make like a W. Drop all the way down and then it's just gonna make some angles going that way and then it's going to come straight down and just kind of stop a little bit higher than it is right here. And what's happening is right here, it's starting to fold in and come this way and drop down. So this might be two petals or this is kind of wrapping around. I'm not exactly sure. It's kind of hard to tell from the picture. And then right here, we just have this big M. So we're just gonna start it on this one, come up and down and over. So an M, right? That's, that's easy, you can do this. And then this petal's coming straight out of the bottom of this, makes a little bump and then a point. And it's kind of thicker right here and then comes in. And then, so this is a lot of petals. If you're like getting frustrated at this point, like, whoa, wait a minute, what was she even drawing? You can just start drawing some of your own petals. The only place it gets a little bit tricky is in here because these petals are facing us. So like they're coming towards us this way. And these ones we can kind of see the side and these ones we start to see the top. So let me just show you how to draw these ones really quick and then you can kind of just look at it and draw the rest of them yourself. So we have this one right here. It starts at the bottom of this petal and then it goes kind of straight. And once it hits this one, it starts to curve in and then it goes back and curves behind this petal. And we can kind of see the bottom of it right here, but there's another petal, petal right under it that we can see. And we'll go ahead and draw that one in right now. So you're gonna start over a little bit, just drop down from this petal, and we're gonna draw like an arch. It's gonna come in, make a little point, then come back up over that petal right there and come over to the side. And then the bottom just kind of follows it a little bit like that. And we can see the inside or the top of the petal right there. So there is a fold. And right here, you can kind of see part of this petal right here. And there's this really cool thing going on right here. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I think it's part of this flower. There's like a, a triangle and then this sideways triangular shape here. And then let's start on this. There's a petal that kind of jets out from all of this. So if we're looking at this shape, it comes below. So we're just gonna kind of right below. Comes to a point here, makes like a little W and then it shoots up to the top and then comes right back in. And there actually is a petal coming off the top of this. I think it might be part of this petal right here, but there's like a little triangular piece. And then we do have a little space in here and then this petal right here. So this petal is coming around 
and then it's going to drop right into this petal right here. And there is one in between these two if you want to draw it. <laughs> this is a lot of petals. If you want to draw this one, it's just kind of coming in. So there it is. And then let's move over here. So we've got this one in and let's see. Actually, right after this one hits this one, there's this big one that comes behind both of these two petals. So you're just going to start to draw a line up. And then this one drops down and makes this little V. And then there's another petal that's coming out in front of it to the side. And it curves down behind this petal. Then there's another one behind it that curves into this one. And then there's just this one that's coming out and it kind of comes and meets up with this petal right here. So there we go. That was seemed like a lot and you're probably like, whoa, 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 if you drew all of those with me, I am very impressed. That was a lot to draw. But what you want to do now is use your eraser and erase out some of these circles. Um, because once we start painting, you can't really erase under watercolor, but you can erase on top of it before we draw it. So I'm just going to erase this circle and any of these and if you lose some of your lines, you can draw them back in. Also, when you're sketching the flower, you want to draw a lot lighter than I drew. I drew a little bit darker so you could see it, but you should draw light enough that you definitely can erase easily. And um, this looks more graphic than, um, it depends on the look you're going for, but seeing these lines is just a different look. And then let's go ahead and just put a few details on the cactuses. They're in the background, but we still have some things going on, like we have these cool needles that are on them. And I'm just, I'll just keep this picture here and you can kind of look at it actually. Maybe that's helpful. I don't need to hide it. You can look at it and probably draw it better than I am. So let's, this bottom of this cactus actually comes all the way down to here. And here is the top of that cactus, which actually is more curved at the top than I made it. And what we want to do is there's these, the needles are coming out kind of in a pattern. So we kind of have like the top of the cactus. It's definitely doesn't bump right there, so I don't know why. But then we kind of have these lines where these, and we're gonna erase these lines, but I feel like they're helpful. This is where the needles kind of come out. So like watch, I'm just gonna draw some circles where these brown little parts are where the needles come out. And then these ones are just going to be down a little bit, so from those, and then down and down. And then on the top, it's like they kind of get closer together. And there's like one in the middle, kind of below. So there's like extra ones, and this is where those needles come out of. I don't see any needles. There's maybe a tiny bit of them here, but the majority are coming out of the tops of these. And then this one back here really is just like, you can just see a few of them. And then on this one right here, they're going sideways like this. So we can kind of start to draw them in and then we'll erase these lines out. I just feel like it's helpful to put these on here before we start painting. And then grab, oh, and then back here we kind of have some too. And these ones are going like in this direction, like this. Okay, and there is something here. It's part of the flower, but I don't really know what it is, so I'm gonna leave it out. You could put it in if you want. Just look at the picture. Then use your eraser to erase out any of those straight lines that you don't want to see when we start painting. And we will get started. Even if I erase some of the spots, it's okay. The little circles that I drew for the brown parts that the cactus leaves are growing out of. And then in here, all of these things we're going to paint after. It's all dry. And then same with these huge needles. We're going to paint them after. And we need to make sure we make the background dark enough to see those because I didn't. Listen, you can't even see the cactus needles. It's terrible. It's a good thing I practiced for this. Okay, now let's set up our watercolors. First we're going to be painting our flower and then we will paint in the background. And we're going to paint the background in pretty quickly because we don't want it to have hard lines. We want it to be a little bit softer. So 
So go ahead and set up your watercolors, grab your watercolor, your water. I'm setting up on my right side because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, set up on the left side. Um, you need, you don't need your pencil anymore, and the gouache can wait for later, so you don't need that yet. But you do need a paper towel and you need something to test your colors on. So let's go ahead and make a puddle to paint our flower, and we're going to paint using a puddle so that we can keep our color consistent and have enough to cover this whole area plus more. Now I have painted this flower before and I did not have enough um, paint. So let's, let's try to make sure we get enough in there. And there's somehow gouache got in my red. Let me try to get it out. See how it's like kind of chalky? That is gouache. And you can kind of see um, the flower on this cactus is bright, bright pink. And what we're going to be painting is a little bit, has a tiny bit more purple in it. Oh, whoops. I just painted it instead of putting it in there. So we are going to be painting light to dark and we're just mixing up a puddle of color for this. And if you want it to be a little bit more um, like orangey you could, or you could add just like a tiny bit of purple to it. Just a tiny bit. Grab that lighter color, test it out, make sure it's the color that you want it to be. And go ahead and paint the whole flower in. Trying not to scrub any of the parts. Scrubbing is where you go back and forth and back and forth and you like go over an area more than once and it just, it can start to tear your paper. And you'll kind of see that I'm overlapping my paint, like, and that's just so I can get a little bit of a flatter color on this. But you could paint it in one petal at a time, and that works too. The only thing you don't want to do is like scrub it, because it's going to ruin your paper. So just looking on the flower, you just want to color, cover in all of the white spaces. And this actually was background, but we're just going to make it part of our flower. So just cover each of those in, trying not to scrub, and then we're going to darken up some of the shadows. Okay, so we have our nice light color on there. We're kind of just letting it dry. And while we're letting it dry, let's go ahead and mix up a little bit of a brighter color in our puddle right here. So that when we start making our shadows, we can see them. So I'm just adding red, and I don't really want it to look like a red flower. And I don't have this really cool magenta color. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit more purple instead of red at least where I shade. Okay, and one thing, when we start shading in these petals, you wanna make sure it's dry. And you can make sure it's dry just by looking at it. If it's shiny, it's wet. If it's not shiny, then it's dry. So that's, that's how I usually tell. Okay, so then you just grab that color, make sure it's dark enough. I feel like it could be maybe even a little bit darker than it is. So let me just darken it a tiny bit more. Okay. And we're just gonna go petal by petal. So I'm gonna show you on a few petals and if you feel like you've got it, then just stop and you can just keep painting it in. You don't have to follow what I'm doing. I just really, I don't want everybody to paint the same flowers as me. I just want to teach technique. So this whole petal is pretty dark. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing in with this darker color. And this part's kind of fun because you can just go petal by petal. This is definitely all dark. This is all dark. There's maybe just a tiny bit of light at the very, the very end. So to get the very end light and not have a hard line, I just 
rinse my brush off in water and then just go over the edge. Let's zoom in. Okay, hopefully you can see uh, just a little bit better. <laughs> like that smear right there. Okay, and let's see. I'm just gonna paint in this one right here, all dark. If you have too much paint on your brush for some of these smaller areas, just touch your paper towel with it and get some of the paint off of your brush. Also, make sure you don't like rub your wrist in, in it. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. And let's just start in this one, this M shaped one, since it's kind of away from these and we can separate it a little bit. So we have a shadow down in here and it kind of comes up and goes along the edge here, but then we're gonna smooth that. We don't want that really hard line. And so I'm just going over it with a wet brush and going all the way to the end of that petal. So it is getting dark, but we don't want like a stripe. We will have some hard, hard highlights on this side, but not, not yet. So then let's go ahead and paint in, let's see what's dry. I'm just like moving around. Uh, let's paint in this one right here. So it's definitely going to be darker inside. And then lighter around the outside. So you can kind of see how it, it blends a little bit, right? When you just go over it with a kind of a wet, but not soaking wet, like a damp brush, I would say. And then for, oh, let's skip that actually and just come down into this one right here. So this is actually one entire petal and we have a really nice shadow right in here. We'll have to get a lot darker. And then this shadow, we'll just work on that part right now. So rinse our brush off, blot it off, and then just go along the edge. It's a lot of paint. And then let's work on this petal right here. So there is a shadow underneath. But not really too many highlights at all. So I'm just painting that one in completely solid. And then let's move over to this one. So this one does have a hard shadow. And you can kind of see it in the paint, like it's this. So that's a hard shadow where it's not like blending smoothly. But sometimes those hard shadows, they're really important. Oh, those soft shadows, sorry, to make it look kind of believable, like if the light is coming from that side, then for sure we would have some hard shadows on all of these petals. Let's go ahead and paint in um, the inside of this one right here. So this petal actually has a highlight right in here. So to keep that highlight, I'm just gonna paint around it. And then when I get to that area, there's actually kind of a dark area here. Instead of, then I just rinse my brush off, blot it off, and then I just soften, soften that shadow up. And then while that's drying, we'll just move back over to this side. So this four, the bottom of it is really dark. Probably need to make it darker on the next round of shadows. And the inside of it is fairly light. So I'm just gonna leave it I'm adding a tiny bit of a shadow, but not really. While that's drying, let's move down to this petal. And it's pretty dark along the bottom. And then fades into a nice um, lighter area up here. But remember to keep this little fold light. And when we paint our background in, hopefully we can just cover that up a little bit. So you can see I'm already running out of my paint. So let's go ahead and mix up a little bit more of that darker red. And if you're still with me, remember, you can just take off on your own at any point and be like, ah, I get this. Then just look at it and just start painting. 
if we were in a workshop, you know, I wouldn't expect you to sit and watch a 30 minute demonstration. I'd kind of show you a few pedals for the stage and then I would just kind of set you free <laughs> and you could do the rest by yourself. And this pedal has the shadow on the inside and not as much on the outside. So we're just working around our flower slowly and let's just do this top petal. So there is a highlight right in the middle of that V. Whoa, that was very, very dark. Okay, just a second. Let me just rinse my brush off, blot it off. And then. So you can lift off paint if you make it too dark. If you do it quickly, it works. All right, now let's work on this petal right here. So remember there's part of it that kind of comes over and down and I'm actually going to, let's see. It looks like it's a little bit darker inside. So there was a line right there. Rinse your brush off, blot it off, and then I'm doing the same thing I did in the other, on the other petals. And this color is darker, but that's okay because we'll be darkening up the rest of these as well. And let's add darker areas to the bottom of this petal. And let's move over here into this area. This crazy area over here. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Okay, let's get this one. Let's just paint this all in dark right here. And again, you can look at it, kind of blur your eyes and see like what, what is working, what feels like it's coming in and going out or going forward and going back. And you can paint it in however you feel like those petals should be. Sometimes I have to admit, I will change it a little bit if I feel like my petals are coming together a little bit too much, I will add highlights maybe where they aren't. And that's kind of the nice thing with painting is you can just do, you're painting, you're not, it's not a picture, so you can take whatever liberties you want and change whatever you want. So like inside of this one, it is very dark. All the way around. And it has some harsh highlights up here. So right here, there's like a... And then once we get down here, these are softer. But keep these hard shadows right up in there because it, it looks, that's how it looks. And then let's come down in here and there's a pretty hard shadow on this one. Now kind of look at it and see if it makes sense and then we're gonna add a dark highlight in the middle. When I say a dark highlight, a dark shadow area in where it would dip down into the center of this flower. Because remember, we're gonna add all of the detail and all of the yellow, I don't know what they're called, pistons, something important is going on there. Just a tiny bit of purple, and then, um, okay. Once we get that darker color, and this kind of faded kind of weird right there, but that's okay. Well, when did I paint that? Let me just, let me grab this brush since this one's kind of dry, and I'm just gonna soften that up. There we go. Okay, now let's grab our darker color, and we're gonna paint in almost just like this whole little area inside of this. Okay, bring it up and then use your brush and let's just soften up these edges. Kind of like we did before, just going along them. I mean, there's still going to be some darker areas in there. We definitely don't want 
like the bunny ears that I just saw. But you have to be careful. I'm going over it, but I'm really, I'm trying not to overwork my paper, and that's the tendency I can have. So I'm just gonna leave that middle part. Just, just leave it, let it sit there for a minute, and let's grab this darker color. And we need to add some darker areas in, on some of these petals to separate them a little bit more. So we need more red. And you can either go more to the red side or more to the violet side, however you wanna add color to this. So I'm gonna add a little bit more red. Okay, so some of these darker areas are going to be like, um, let's look at the petals down in here. This petal is really dark. Um, on this petal, not the whole thing though. This is just really kind of like this. And then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna soften this one up. You wanna make sure you don't have too much water on your brush at this point or else it can kind of lift the color underneath up. And then we're gonna add a shadow right here. So you can see now I'm just adding a little bit more depth in some of these areas. And again, what this does is it separates the petals from each other a little bit more and just adds a little bit more contrast and interest. Because without some of these shadows, it just would look kind of like this is going, um, these petals are a lot flatter than they actually are. So they are curving in to these shapes. Um, and let's maybe like at the bottom of number four, or number four I have these labeled, <laughs> bottom of this petal. So you can just keep going around, adding a few of these shadows, look at the picture, and also just think, you know, where is the sun coming from? There definitely needs to be a darker shadow on the bottom of this. This petal right here. And this color is easy enough to mix up, but you can see I keep running out. So. My red always goes first. The nice thing with these sets is you can pop out the color and get another color and put it in, which I like a lot. Okay, so let's just add the shadow on the bottom of this petal. And then we're gonna take that same color and bring it onto this petal right here. and soften the edge, and let's see, oh yeah, I don't know how I missed this one. There is definitely a shadow here. Okay. So kind of blur your eyes and look at your flower and just see what parts are coming together a little bit too much. What parts need to be darker? Are there any other um, shadows that you're missing? Do the petals come together too much? Do you need to add maybe a little bit more shading on any of them? This is when you want to do it. This is the stage. This is like the detail stage. And if not, then you can go ahead and start, we will start on the background. So I'm just gonna keep it like this. You can definitely add more shadows if you would like, but we are gonna work on the background and what we wanna do is mix up some really big puddles. So we want a green for the cactus, a lighter green, a darker green for the cactus, almost like a black for these really, like these areas in here. And then there's like this brown, it's gonna be here, it's a little bit in here and then just on these. So we're not gonna make it detailed, but we do need these colors in there. Um, also, there's the option if you want, you could just paint these cactuses bright green and then do a black in all of these areas and then do the white after. You don't have to paint in all these details that I'm gonna be doing. 
I'm not really doing details, but you don't have to paint it um, so it kind of merges together how I'm going to do it. And last time I did this, it was so light. And so I need to make this a lot brighter than it was. The lighter areas actually, maybe I'll do um, the lighter areas here and then I'll make this the darker part because there's more dark areas than light. And when you're mixing puddles this big, just make sure to test your colors because um, see how light that is. Like you don't want this kind of background. This is what happened to me. You want it to be dark. We want some contrast here. So make sure you're adding enough color to those puddles and it takes a little bit of time and that's okay. You just keep dipping it in your paint, testing out your colors, making sure they're the right color and then to dull your color, like I don't want my color to be bright green necessarily like this. This is like a really bright green. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red. And what the red does is it kind of grays it a little bit and just makes it a little bit duller and not so vibrant, but you might like the vibrant green. And if you do, like this is with red, this is without. If you like that really bright, vibrant green, then you can use it. You do not have to use the colors that I'm using. I don't think I can repeat that enough. I really like, want to teach you skills in these tutorials that you can use for your own paintings. I don't want everybody to end up with the same like honestly yours will look a lot better than this I bet so post them to Instagram hashtag Mr. Otter Art Studio or just Mr. Otter Studio when we put this page together we, we named it Mr. Otter Art Studio and I it's just so long I like Mr. Otter Studio is kind of what I was thinking but okay so we're getting a little bit darker but still not we are not there like look when I paint it thick it's it's not as dark as I want it to be. This is just think of the stage as kind of like a relaxing break for a second where you just get to kind of um, paint a little, explore a little. Make sure to add red to the puddle, the bigger puddle, because really the highlights are here, here, this one's a little bit lighter, and here, but then the rest of it is going to be dark. So here's our lighter green. Let's just kind of see how light that is. Yeah. And sometimes you might even want to test the colors next to each other. Like here's the lighter green, here's the darker green. They're like the exact same. So that's not good. So I'm gonna make this one just a little bit lighter than I have it. Okay, and then the, we're gonna make a brown here. And you can add red to the brown too to um, mute it just a little bit and change the color. And you can even add a little green to it and yellow, depends on like how bright you want it to be. Like I think it needs to add a lot. I think we need a little bit of yellow and maybe red. Okay, and then let's mix up. This one needs to be pretty big because this is actually the, the most area that we're gonna paint in. So make a big puddle and you can use black. You could just use red and green if you want. It's up to you. For time's sake, I don't know, I kind of want to just use black because uh, it just works so fast. So I'm going to, I don't have black anywhere else in it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of red and green to it. Maybe just green. But even though I'm using black, watch, since this is a big puddle, it looks totally dark, right? And then you start painting it and it looks like that. So that's not dark enough. It needs to be darker which means we need to add pigment to it. If you accidentally splatter on your, just pick up the droplets and be more careful. I'm talking to myself. So I'm gonna add more green, maybe even more red. The reason we're mixing all of these up first is because we want them to kind of blend together a little bit in the background. We don't want any harsh lines to draw attention to themselves. Yeah, we can even use brown in this. We can use a lot of different colors. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty dark. That's probably as dark as I'm gonna be able to get it. Okay, mixing up colors, well, seriously, it takes like the most time, doesn't it? All right, let's zoom out here and let's go ahead and start painting this in. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with the lightest parts. So I'm going to grab this lighter green, paint that in first, and I'm going to paint it here, here, and on this one, and on the top of this one. And then I'm going to grab the darker green and add the shadows. And then I'm going to add the black and some of the brown areas. So here's my light green. It's pretty light. I kind of wish it was just a little bit lighter, but to make it lighter, you can just kind of take some of the water out of it. And it's lighter up here than it is at the bottom. When you're painting by your flower, just, you can leave like a little white river if you don't want to overlap the colors. And I want these, oh, whoops, I dipped in my darker one. So this is like the top of a cactus. Okay, and now I'm gonna grab this darker color and I'm gonna paint in these side parts. And I'm just like lightly going around the edges. And on down here. So I'm trying to do this fast because number one, I don't want a lot of details in this background. And number two, I want these colors to blend together a little bit. Like my light color is like completely gone here. Okay, sorry, I ran out of um, battery. Uh, so I'm not sure where that stopped, but I should have been doing this way faster than I am. Uh, that's okay. So I just kind of picked up some of the paint here to make it light again. And then I want to darken up in here just a little bit more than it is. And now I'm going to add um, the black. So I'm just picking up this darker color and I'm just painting it in just quickly. And I'll show you how I kind of will blend it um, into those wetter colors. Just be careful around the flower, you know, that you don't cover it up. That's why you kind of see I'll leave like this nice little white road. And don't worry, I'll, I'll mess with those edges in just a second. And you can overlap these colors. In fact, it's good to overlap these colors. Like that is what I wanted on the whole thing, but I had to stop and start my recorder. So make sure when you start painting your background in that you are ready and you're not um, gonna be distracted because you really wanna work fast when it's wet or else it dries and it just it, it's really hard to get those soft edges back in. Okay, so now I'm rinsing my brush off and I want to soften up some of these edges. I'm just going over them with my paintbrush. Especially like right here. We just don't want hard edges. We want it to be really soft. And like right here and right in here. Okay. And if these little spots bother you, you can paint them in, but I kind of like them sometimes. Okay, now let's just kind of let this dry a little bit. Oh, we need the brown spots. So then pick up the brown and hopefully it's still wet because I think this looks, part looks really good if it is. And we already kind of drew those in. So let's just kind of drop them over it. And if they're too, if they stand out too much, I'll show you what you can do. And hopefully you can still see them. If you can't just look at a picture of the cactus, those look so dark. So I'm just soaking them up a little bit here. I'm, I have a dry brush now and I'm just picking up the extra paint because I don't, I don't want them to be like polka dots really. And the best thing is if it's wet, they really just blend in well. But if it's not, you can kind of go over them and add that like watery, I guess, look. Okay. And then I'm just drying it a little bit. picking up some of the color so that it's lighter. And now we just need to let this dry and then we're going to start putting some of those um, needles in. And you can also add, there are definitely some brown areas in here if you want to add them, but I'm just kind of keeping it like this. So while we let this dry, I'm just going to hurry and go um, wash 
this out so I have some room for my gouache and I'm gonna clean out my water. All right, my background's still drying a little bit, but we can definitely work inside the flower. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And we are gonna start using our gouache. So this part's kind of exciting because uh, this is where you can add these details over the top and they just look really cool. Um, so you don't need very much gouache. So less is more. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of white and a, just a tiny, tiny bit of yellow. Last time I used like way, way too much yellow. Let's scoot this up so you can see it. That's enough. Okay, and the nice thing with this is it's gonna layer right on top really nicely. Um, so that's a little bit too watery. Oh, I don't know why there's water all over in here. I just washed it out. I should have dried it. There we go. So you can make it a little bit more yellow or a little bit more white. It just depends on the kind of the look you want to have inside of here. Um, so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to come in here and make these little, there's like a bunch of paint on here, sorry. These little stamen piston things, these little yellow, I don't, they're almost like little yellow hot dogs. And they're going in every single direction. But this whole area is full of them. This is actually really fun to do, I think. <laughs> if you are still following along with me, great job. I really, really want to see what you have painted. I like um, doing work. I mean, I haven't done one for a while, but I like doing workshops because I'm like, oh my gosh, you, you had a way better idea for that area than me. <laughs> it's just different painting, talking to people that aren't here that will one day be watching this. You can kind of fill it up however, um, however much you want. Um, just remember there are some like stragglers, little ones up here. And you don't want to paint too many or else you won't even be able to tell there's any in there. Okay, so we've got this cool pattern kind of going on in there. And now the background is pretty dry. So we are going to work on the, the needles that are coming out of our cactus. And from what I can see, I'm definitely not a botanist, um, but I can see there's like almost three needles coming out of each one of these um, brown spots, but not on the side. So like this is the top and on the side there really aren't very many there. And hopefully now that we have a little bit of a darker background, we'll be able to see them because this one, you can't even see them at all. So my hope is that when we'll be able to see these needles in here. So we'll just kind of get this. Here we go. Okay. So here is this. This part's really fun. <laughs> I'm just gonna start at the top and move down because it just seems to make a little bit of sense to me. And I don't want this. I mean, I guess it's okay to have the kind of dry brush look, but. See, this one has like three just spikes. There's lots of huge ones coming out from here. in this direction, kind of breaking up this space. Just remember, quick is better with this. You want to just get them on there really fast. And then up here, these ones, are, you can see them, but they're really kind of, they're not standing out as much as it looks like they are in here, but that's okay. Okay, and then let's put some of the, the needles down here. And we can actually see, I don't know what's going on back here, but there's like a lot of needles coming from this one. And I mean a lot. Okay. 
Okay, in this one, these needles are kind of falling down in this direction. There is like a needle coming out from there. I shouldn't have done that. That is a distraction, but that's okay. Okay, and let's just add these ones coming down from the top here. Let's start at the bottom and then move to the top. So. can't see them very well, but they are going to start to dip down kind of in this area. Need more white. Okay, so we can kind of see some of them. I feel like this looks a little furry right here. I don't know if I would have done it that way. But my background's dry. These are dry. Um, I want to get the gouache off of my palette because I'm not going to be using that. Um, you could sign your name, you know, like put it in there. You have gouache, so you can do whatever you want. Like I could do my name. <laughs> okay, now since it's dry, we also want to be careful. See how there's like puddles of paint on my tape that's still shiny, which means it's wet. So you can kind of dry that off before taking the tape off. We don't want any um, paint to run onto this. And then go ahead and take your tape off. You try to take it off in the order that you put it on, if you can remember. And you can tell it is lifting up some of my paper. And this is student grade paper. This is Mr. Otter's watercolor paper that you can buy on our website, www.mrotterstudio.com. And um, yeah, it works really well and it's priced really well too. So there you have it, <laughs> the cactus flower. Here's a little zoom in so we can see it a little bit better. Um, this is a little distracting, but that's okay. It's kind of cool. Sometimes watercolor, you just got to let it do what it wants to do. But thank you so much for painting with me today. Seriously, this is one of the longest tutorials I've probably ever posted. Um, but I really appreciate you sticking with it. <laughs> I do need to edit a few things in it, but thank you so much for joining me. Show me your paintings. I would love to see them on um, Instagram using hashtag Mr. Otter Studio and have a wonderful day. Also, um, one thing I'm noticing as I'm looking at this a little bit more, these white, some of these white areas like this, they kind of turned gray. So I kind of wanted to see what it's going to look like if I just put another layer of gouache right over the top. Because I really, I want this to look like a cactus so bad. So I'm going to just make these a little bit whiter. And I guess more opaque instead of transparent. I don't know if they'll dry so light again. They're just like... Some of these dried and you can't even see them. And since this is our first time using gouache, I mean, we want it to look good, right? Okay, so now those are showing up a little bit more, which is good. Okay, so there you are, prickly pear. Thank you so much again for joining with me and thanks for sticking with it. Hope you learned some techniques in there. And if you have any tips, also you could share for people painting this, go ahead and share them. Um, and have a wonderful day.